Hey everyone, I'm Aria and I hope you're doing well. In this tutorial, I want to show you how I created this render using the built-in fluid simulation engine inside of Blender. Okay, let's get started. We are going to be using the default cube, but it's just going to be in our way for now. So let's head over to the top and mute this. Next, we can hit Shift A and add an icosphere. I'm just going to head down to the settings here and set the subdivisions to 2. I'm just going to rename this object to force. We do want to make this a little bit smaller, so I'm going to select the icosphere, hit S to scale, and type in point 2. The idea is to use this icosphere as a way to pull liquid towards the center. The next thing that we want to do is add in another icosphere, so shift A and icosphere. In this case, we can just leave the subdivisions to 1. We're going to scale this down as well, so S to scale and type in point 2. Then I'm going to hit G and move this object up and off to the side a little bit. What we want to do is create a bunch of these icospheres and surround our center object. Before we duplicate that, we just want to add something to it, just so that will save ourselves a bunch of steps later on. So with the icosphere selected, you can head over to the physics properties. You'll see that I have a flip fluid add-on here. If you do want to use that, you will get slightly better results. But since this is an add-on, we're just going to use the standard fluid engine inside of Blender. Let's head down here and select type. In this case, we want to select flow, which just means that this object is where our liquid is going to come from. Next, we want to select our flow type and set that to liquid. Everything else can be left at default. Now that we've got our flow object ready, we want to duplicate this and surround our center point. You don't necessarily need this many objects, but I found the more objects you get, the more natural of a result that you'll get. If you just use four of these, you'll get a very square effect. Maybe I'll add one more. And then you can just space these as evenly as possible. Doesn't need to be perfect, but you just want to sort of be surrounding our center object. Then if you look over here, you'll notice that all of these are now flow objects. We want all of the liquid to travel to the center. And I found the best way to do that is to create an object that pulls everything to the center. What we need to do is go over here and just add a normal force field. Since we want to pull everything inward, I'm going to set the strength to minus 10 and I'm going to select surface. So instead of just pulling it towards the center point, it's going to use all of our faces to pull the fluid inward. So we can head back up to our cube. I'm just going to scale this. So I'm going to select our cube, hit S to scale and type in 3. Then back in the physics properties, let's click fluid one more time and select our type to be domain. Then under domain type, select liquid. The higher you go with the resolution, the better results you're going to get. So for now, I'm just going to set this to 88. If you're having issues with some of these not turning into emitters, you can just select the domain and scale it down just a little bit and these should all go blue. Next, we can just scroll all the way down, select the mesh option. Now that we've got all of our objects as emitters, we can just turn off our base objects so that we can see everything better. Also don't want to render these, so I'm going to turn that off as well. We can just test our simulation, so I'm going to make sure I'm on frame 1. And if you find your simulation is not working properly, sometimes it just needs to be reset. What I like to do is take any one of the values and just re-enter it, and it should load your simulation. Now if I hit play, you'll see that all of our liquid heads towards the center, but it's sort of falling down and not really doing what we want. So let's just change a few settings. The first thing that we want to do is head all the way down in our domain settings and open up the field weights. Then let's select gravity and set that to zero. You'll also notice that our simulation was a little bit quick, so I'm just going to change the speed to point 0.2. What we want to do is control our force. So what's happening is we're getting a constant pull from this center object. So once our liquid hits the center, it's being continually pulled towards the center. I'm going to find the frame where our liquid starts to hit our object, which is about frame 8. Then with our force selected, I'm going to head over to the strength properties and set a keyframe. I'm going to move one frame to the right and set this to zero and add a keyframe. Then what this will do is as soon as our liquid gets to the center, this force will turn off. Now when I play the simulation, you'll notice that our liquid sort of shoots out from the center. 
Now that we've got the base of our simulation finished, you can start tweaking this so it's a little bit nicer. So the first thing we can do is shade smooth. Then the number one thing that's going to make this a lot better is raising your resolution. So depending on how fast your computer is, you can bring this up a lot higher. In this case, I'm going to go to 150. Then the next thing we're going to do is play with our time scale. Once you've got a really nice frame, what you can do is head over to the time scale and add a keyframe. I'm just going to turn off the domain for a second, then head to frame 20 and set the speed to 0 0.025 and add a keyframe. Then I'll head back to frame 1, turn our domain back on. This will give us the basic shape, but keep our liquid from exploding everywhere. By the way, you'll probably only need around 40 frames to get this result. So instead of baking 250 frames, we only need to bake 40. There are a couple more settings that we can change, and one of those is the time steps. What this will do is calculate the amount of steps per frame, which just will essentially give you a smoother result. Just keep in mind that the higher you go with this, the slower your bake will be. And for now, I'm just going to leave it to this. Next, we can add some diffusion. And what this will do is just give us the ability to add some surface tension, which will help our fluids stick together better. And you can also use this to get different types of liquid. If you've got a more powerful system, you can change the resolution divisions. Then once you've got a setup that you like, the next thing you want to do is bake the simulation. So let's click on our domain. Then we want to head down to the cache settings, switch the type from replay to all. In this case, we only need to bake about 18 frames. So I'm going to set that to 18 and select bake. And now you can move around this freely and find the best angle and frame for your simulation. Once I had my final render, I added a camera and added some depth of field. I also added two light sources, as well as an HDR lighting setup, then added a very simple background. And this was my final render using the Mantaflow engine. I also created a version using the Flip Fluids add-on, which I thought gave a lot better results. And part of that was, I find the add-on to be a lot quicker than Mantaflow, which means I can do a lot higher resolution. If you're interested in seeing how I created either of these results, you can head over to my Gumroad page and pick up both of these files. Or if you don't have the add-on and you're just interested in seeing the Mantaflow version, you can head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. You'll get this file as well as a few others, and see all the settings that I used. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye!